So good morning and welcome everyone. Thanks again to Keegan for that introduction. Thanks to Jennifer for inviting me to speak to you today. And I realize that you guys are in a sport management program. So some of you will have more experience in aquatics than others. My goal today in the next kind of 25 minutes is to give you a rundown kind of an aquatics 101. So I'll be presenting for about 25 to 30 minutes and then leaving time uh, for questions. Uh, I'm just looking at my clock here. Yeah, so 25 to 30 minutes, we're gonna be going through some basics. As I go along, I really want you guys to feel like the chat box is there for you to throw in questions, comments, agrees, disagrees. It's really boring to teach without a class in front of me, right? Like you guys are there. I can see some of you on camera, some of you I can't. And it's really helpful to me as a presenter to kind of get your feedback on what makes sense, what doesn't. So if I say something and you have no idea what I meant, definitely throw a question mark in the chat box. I'm here to give you the information and leave you with a better understanding of this sector of the industry as something that you are um, considering how it's going to apply to your college degree and how it might apply to your future. Awesome. So quick history geography lesson, just because you may not know where I'm based. So I am based in Canada. I reside in the province of Alberta and I live just outside of Calgary. So this time of the year, it's pretty cold. I was hearing kind of in Kansas, 40s, 50s, 60s. We have definitely already been below zero Fahrenheit this year. And so one of the things I love about the aquatics industry is I get to work in pools, work indoors in a warm, humid environment when it's three feet of snow and freezing outside. So for those of you, anybody, if you've been to Canada, uh, type in the province to Canada that you visited. I know we've got some people from northern states like Wisconsin. If you've ever been to Canada, type in the location that you visited. If you haven't been to Canada, type no in the chat box. It's always kind of great to see where people have been. And so Alberta is a province that a lot of people are not as familiar with. It's kind of like if you took Texas and you combined it with Colorado. So we have the beautiful Rocky Mountains. We have lots of nature, outdoor, beautiful glacier fed lakes, the beautiful blue lake in the middle. We have lots of agriculture, we have ranching, we have prairies, we grow a lot of wheat, we grow a lot of other crops, as well as um, we have the Calgary Stampede, which is the largest outdoor rodeo in the world. And we have a very interesting history as what was called the Western Frontier of Canada. So sometimes people think of Alberta as kind of like a hick country area. But the amazing thing about Alberta for the swimming pool industry is that the swimming pool industry in Alberta is one of the wealthiest and the most robust in Canada. So basically what happened is as the oil boom occurred in Alberta, as oil was discovered in the 70s and we had a lot of revenue starting to come in from producing oil, a lot of that money was reinvested into community infrastructure. So into swimming pools that would cause those oil workers to move to Alberta, not just for work, but also to bring their families and settle here permanently. So on this screen, you have photos of pools in Alberta and Alberta is a relatively small province. We have 3.5 million people in a very, very large piece of land, but we have a lot of beautiful swimming pools. In the middle of the screen, you can see West Edmonton Mall World Water Park. This is an indoor water park. It used to be the largest indoor water park in the world. Kalahari now is building uh, the biggest indoor water park in the world at Mall of America. But indoor water park, we've also got a lot of outdoor water parks as well as outdoor pools. Why does this matter? So the reason I mention all of this is it means that the industry here is bigger and there's a lot more potential for jobs and there's also a lot more significant roles and bigger facilities that you can run. So as I'm sure you've discussed in your programs or you'll see that some states have smaller recreation facilities or they have smaller assets that you can run. Alberta, we have huge pools and so there's a lot of potential to have different positions. As we go through the presentation, I'm going to talk about different types of pools, different types of jobs you might see, and definitely connect it to the fact 
how those of you who don't have an interest in aquatics, you may still encounter aquatics in your work in the future. Oh, so I'm seeing, yep, yeah, Wisconsin Dells has a lot of great water parks, the original Kalahari, seeing a couple different people have been to places in Canada, so that's great. And I'm sure you can tell by my accent. A lot of people say I have an accent depending on where you're based in the US. So a little bit about me. I'll talk about my professional accomplishments next, but I like to talk about me as a person just to give you an idea of I'm just a regular person who started in recreation and how it brought me to where I am today. So you as a person, you're enrolled in a sport management program. You obviously have a personal interest in fitness. You have an interest in recreation. You have an interest in, in some sort of aspect about making people better or working with sport teams. In the chat box, type your dream job. Let's imagine you could have any job in the world. What is your dream job in this field after graduation? Don't think about limits. Don't think about, uh, it's, it's not gonna happen. Uh, I don't have the experience. What is your dream job after graduation with this program? What are you hoping to do? Okay, NFL sideline analyst, awesome. PGA tour, perfect basketball coach, game day operations for basketball, teachers, PR rep, that's a huge one. Sports teams are doing amazing things now with PR, especially with social media. Sports psychologist, Michael Phelps has talked a lot about the importance of mental health as well as sports psychology, supporting athletes at the high performance level. Scouting, talent evaluation, awesome. So nothing aquatic related in the chat box and that's completely okay. That's pretty much what I expected. What I'm hoping to connect you to by the end of this session is understanding that aquatics will impact a lot of your different potential career paths, as well as different jobs that you might have indirectly. Maybe you're not directly responsible for a pool, but you're going to see pools and aquatic facilities at lots of different intervals in what you're doing. So my background, I grew up, I was super unathletic growing up. I was that kid that read a book in the back of the room. We went swimming as a family. I thought I was not very fit or fitness driven until I got to university or college and then really discovered that I had always done sports I didn't really like and really found my way in the sporting world when I discovered that I could pick different things to do. So how did I work in aquatics? How did I end up working in aquatics? So I became a lifeguard at age 16 I know we've got at least one lifeguard in the class, became a lifeguard and lifeguarded outdoor summer camp. And it was the best job ever. It was probably the stereotype that you're picturing at a beach, at a waterfront, working outside all day, you know, relatively easy job. Then I went and did my bachelor's degree at the University of Toronto. It was not at all in anything practical. Both my bachelor's and master's are in religious studies, so they're not at all related to recreation. That's just how things panned out. When I graduated in 2011, the economy was pretty bad after the 2008 financial crash. There were not a lot of jobs in my field. There were not a lot of jobs in general. Everybody I knew was graduating college and they were going to work at Starbucks or they were temping at a law firm or they were doing admin work. And I was able to get a position at the University of Toronto. It was a faculty of kinesiology position because I had the direct hands-on experience of working in aquatics for the previous eight years. And then I also had a master's degree. So the university hired me to work as a shift supervisor at the competitive Olympic facility. So we had a 50 meter Olympic pool, as well as a 25 yard lap pool. And I worked there for several years. During that time, I was really considering kind of what do I want to do with my life? I, I need to pay my bills. I, at that point, thought I still wanted to work in social services, helping people using my religion background to work in multiculturalism and, and different things like that. At the same time, I was also applying to the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, the RCMP. Those of you who have ever seen our National Police Force in the red coat and the black pants and the hat on a horse, 
So I was recruited for that for about two years and didn't really know what I was doing, was trying to leave aquatics, was trying to stay in aquatics. The typical crisis that sometimes you have either after high school or college where you're like, I don't know what I'm doing. I ended up staying in aquatics. I moved out here to Alberta in 2013, and I've been working in aquatics now for eight, nine years permanently. And it's been really, really great for me. It's took me a while to find my place and become comfortable with this is my job, this is my career. And so you don't always have to know right away what you want to do. For those of you that didn't have a dream job, you, you, you don't know what you want, that's okay too. It takes some time to get to a place where you're, you know what you want and, and to make it happen. So don't be frustrated if you're still starting out and you don't know where to go with all of that. So I worked as a municipal aquatic supervisor, which means that I was responsible for running the swimming pool, everything from staffing, uh, operations, programming, advertising, for a local government. So I worked in towns of 2,500 as well as towns of 15,000 and I was solely responsible for the pool. Did that until 2017 when I founded my business, Lakeview Aquatic Consultants. I did it because I was often doing extra jobs, extra work on the side and I really wanted to start to brand myself and have my own business. So it's one thing to be me, Katie, to be helping you with a project or to be teaching a class or to be doing a presentation, but I felt it was really important right off the hop to have a brand and an identity. So I started that in 2017 while I still had my day job and then at the end of 2018 switched to what I do full time, which is a consulting role. I'll be talking a little bit more about what I do now as a consultant later in the presentation. Next couple slides, I wanna talk about the core of the aquatics industry and kind of what are some things that you'll see out there and what that means, okay? So let's talk first about stereotypes, okay? If you've never been a lifeguard, you've always seen lifeguards portrayed in the media or you've seen how they've been portrayed in movies. You might have the vision of, you know, there was Pamela Anderson in the original Baywatch, there was Zac Efron in the newer Baywatch, right? There's a lot of stereotypes about lifeguarding. At a fundamental basic level, lifeguards are protecting swimmers from drowning or having medical emergencies in the swimming pool, and then they may be involved in other duties. Not always portrayed particularly well in the media, and sometimes we are ourselves responsible for not, uh, not providing the best picture either, right? So this was a very famous photo that went viral in 2012. Was it Rio Olympics 2012? No, 2016. 2016 Olympics, this lifeguard, not particularly impressed with their job lifeguarding high performance swimmers. And this prompted a lot of discussion in the aquatics industry in the lifeguard field about how we, how we view ourselves and how we have these stereotypes that sometimes we don't work to ensure that the stereotypes disappear, right? Acting like this during a high performance event when the video cameras are on is part of the reason that sometimes the aquatics industry isn't taken seriously as a profession or a career which is unfortunate because I'm gonna show you that there's a full spectrum of jobs available and that's not even touching on all the other related jobs that may impact the jobs that you're looking at having in the future. Okay, so as with any sports organization, there are different types of organizations that have swimming pools. So who owns the pool will depend on the type of organization but government, municipal, nonprofit, such as YMCA, Jewish Community Center, Boys and Girls Club, hospitality, so those are gonna be your hotels or your condo management buildings, education, so your high schools, your post-secondary colleges and universities, even some day schools have swimming pools. Recreation and fitness, so we're starting to see a lot more private gyms, fitness facilities build small swimming pools. Campgrounds, swim schools, such as Goldfish, British Swim School, summer camps have swimming pools. Residential care refers to your senior citizen residences or perhaps your long-term care homes 
for the disabled, visually impaired, and then health and beauty is going to be the growing segment of day spas, plunge pools, um, like water experiences, float tanks. Related to the swimming pool industry, it's also important to consider who owns the swimming pool and whether they're public sector or private sector. So you will have covered this or you'll cover this in a lot of your sport management programs, but basically understanding that the facility, the basic rules that govern the facility, how it operates, whether they make a profit, whether they offer new programs or old standby programs is basically whether it's a you know, for-profit corporation or it's public sector. So a lot of swimming pools by their very nature are public sector, but that doesn't mean that they're all public sector. So for example, we are starting to see a lot of the major sports teams, whether it's the NFL, NHL, NBA, they have swimming pools in their change rooms or at the college level, athletic teams have a lot of aquatic facilities. But most people, when they picture a swimming pool, they picture the 10,000 plus public commercial facilities in the continental United States, right? So driving down the road with your family and deciding to go to the pool for an afternoon. Those are typically public sector and they're gonna be run a lot differently from a private sector business. So types of aquatic facilities, there are so many different types of pools. I'm sure there will be some that we've missed on this list. If you have a pool in your area, can you name that your favorite pool to go to or the favorite type of pool to go to? So we've talked about Kalahari. Does anyone have a pool in their area that they like to go to, whether it's to swim laps, to sit in the hot tub, pop that in the chat box so we have a sense of different types of pools that you're going to. Lazy River, yep, <laughs> love the Lazy River. So you've got your competition pools or your lap pools for lane swimming, your leisure pools, hot tubs or spas with warmer water, water parks, uh, lazy river, water slides, spray parks, splash pads, fountains, decorative pools, baptismal fonts, float tanks. All of these are aquatic facilities and somebody has to operate them. Who is operating these different facilities? So the next couple slides we're going to look at are the different types of roles that exist in the aquatics industry. And again, you may never dive right into doing this exact role, but it's important for you to understand what is in, entailed in the aquatic side of the industry. The most discouraging kind of disrespectful professional relationships I've had have been with other recreation professionals, other sport professionals who don't understand how nuanced and complex swimming pools are. They just think, oh, you know, she's managing the little bathtub in her backyard. Swimming pools are multi-million dollar assets with a lot of programs, a lot of infrastructure, and they're a robust part of the sporting industry, but they're often not taken seriously. So when you start out in the aquatic industry, there's a variety of positions you could have. So you have lifeguard, swim instructor, I have done all of these, right? I've lifeguarded the pool, taught lessons, coached water polo, taught aquatic fitness, taken scuba classes, taught babysitting, supervised staff, done the pool operations, done the timing at swim meets, uh, orchestrated special events. I've done customer service, right? That's like any sport facility. There's a basic level of staffing. As you get more and more experienced, as you pick up more skills, as you perhaps you have a recreation certificate or a management background, then you move into more leadership positions where you don't just come in and work. You actually look long-term at the facility planning. So what that looks like, you could be a head lifeguard, you could be an assistant manager. A programmer refers to somebody who programs the pool space for programming such as lessons or swim team or special uses. Coordinating, head coach, instructor, trainer. So leadership capacity to train other people as instructors to teach courses. And then of course, facility operator, which we'll get to. And then where I finished my municipal career, so I did this for five years in Alberta, I was a municipal aquatic supervisor or manager. 
So I would be responsible for a staff of anywhere from 30 to 50 people. I would have a budget of over $1 million. I would have an asset, like a pool worth over $25 million. That is a real job. Unfortunately, a lot of people do not give aquatics the credit that it's due, but it is a very robust side of the industry, okay? You can then further advance outside of aquatics, not pigeonholing yourself, but expanding, having that expertise to move into recreation manager, community services director, program director of a bigger facility, a bigger multiplex, um, sometimes even a executive director of a whole organization. So this was from a email just this morning showing a variety of positions that are posted currently. And this is focusing primarily on the very, very aquatics side of the industry. So what I mean is that you're working directly in the service delivery side in those commercial pools that are open to the public. What I don't have the time to spend as much on is there's the facility side. So people who are operating pools that don't offer lessons and don't provide lifeguards. That's also a robust part of the industry, building management and maintenance. But you can see here that these are just the postings that were highlighted today. There's often hundreds of postings across the United States that incorporate an aquatic element. Aquatics is a very, very popular program. It's a classic program. It's not like it's going to go out of, it fall out of popularity. We're always going to have aquatic programs. And so related to that, the certified pool operator certification is something to consider having as you move through uh, sport management or recreation. If you ever want to end up at a facility that has a pool, but you don't think, oh, I'm not going to do the pool, it's still important to understand the pool as an asset. I call it like having your driver's license. So imagine you want to drive on the road. You don't own a car yet. You don't need a car but you need to have a driver's license to know the basic rules of the road. So the certified pool operator course is a course that I teach. And the reason it's required is because many jurisdictions in the US, the individual states require that the people who run these commercial swimming pools, they have a basic safety course, kind of like your driver's license or a food handler certificate. It's basic information to understand the importance of the swimming pool as a public health risk. So that's a course that I teach and that is something I would definitely consider if you think you're going to stay in recreation long term. It's usually 340 US, but it's good for five years and I'm seeing it be the tipping point for a lot of people when they're going to apply for jobs at multiplexes and larger organizations. It's an asset that you have that the employer doesn't have to pay for. So what would you do if you are an aquatic supervisor in a typical day? And then I'm going to compare that to what I do now as a consultant. So typical day for me when I was aquatic supervisor, <coughs> it's basically like being a business owner. I have to do all aspects of the facility. Some of it's going to be every day. Some of it's going to be every week. Some of it's going to be monthly, but it falls into three big buckets. Administration and staffing the facility and planning. So I'm basically looking at what staff do I need, payroll, what programs are we going to offer? How does the, you know, what is the financial reconciliation every day? How does the water quality look? What is the maintenance we need to get performed? Who am I hiring to do the repairs that I need? How am I using the pool space? It's a really, really complex job with a diverse skill set. And so you really become a generalist. You're not just a specialist, but you're a generalist within the aquatic specialty. So you need a lot of different skills and it makes you very versatile to move into other fields, other industries, because you're not just one person doing one task every day. Things are constantly changing and you need to react. And then how is that different from what I do now? So my business now, Lakeview Aquatic Consultants, we're based near Calgary, Alberta, but we do work with clients around the world and across Canada. So basically what I like to say now is that I'm a professional handholder. So I provide coaching and support to different clients and every day looks different for me. 
So it is very self-directed. You have to be self-motivated to go find business, go build relationships, go um, give back to the community, give back to facilities. My revenue comes from different streams, such as teaching classes, consulting with clients, coaching other clients, giving presentations or speaking sessions, but that is all self-generated. And that's self-generated by having over eight years of experience in the industry in my province and then also connecting with aquatic professionals across Canada, right? So I was talking before with Jennifer regarding a mutual connection, Tim at Aquatic Council and getting connected with different professionals in the US and different states and you know, writing articles. Revenue is a lot less stable, but it's there's a lot of different ways that you can move your business in terms of, I do a lot on social media. I do a lot of things that maybe in the aquatics industry, I'm not directly in the pool anymore, but I'm still educating and impacting a lot of different people. So that's kind of my drive by to give you as much information as I can in 30 minutes. Um, I am everywhere on social media. So if you're interested in learning more kind of about what we do, check us out on Facebook, check us out on Instagram, um, we have lots of different information about aquatics. You are always welcome to email me, send me a DM questions. Um, I'm going to take some questions now, but definitely I want you to consider, even if you think, okay, well, I'm going to work for the NFL or I'm going to be a talent coach, or I'm going to do sports psychology. Don't write off aquatics. Make sure that you understand that aquatics is a significant part of recreation. As I mentioned earlier, the one thing that drove me crazy is I had one, one colleague for several years who she, she disrespected aquatics tremendously as a revenue source, as a reason that brought people into the building. She just didn't get it. And that's fine. You don't have to love pools. You don't have to love swimming, but it's no less important than the arena or the track or the golf course or the you know, it's an equal part of the recreation and sport world. It may not be as high profile as football. It may not be as high profile as basketball, but it is a huge driver in our industry. So 